When you look at art, every person who looks at it brings to it certain things. And the artist has certain things in the work that the person is looking at. So the person's interpretation of the work is somewhere between that. What you bring to the work and what the artist puts into work. And, and every artist wants to think that, you know, my, it's a universal thing. It, and it's not uh, anything that's germane to any particular region or something like that. I believe that you deal in specific. As an artist, you go to specifics. And from specifics, if it's good enough, then people will find the generalities. Um, for instance, if you look at the flag there, you don't have to know the history of the flag to know that it's an old thing. Can we agree on that? That it's not the one that's, that was made yesterday. The other thing that we can see is that it's deteriorating. You see some parts of it, you don't see other parts of it. You know that it's a flag, and you know that the flag is deteriorating. Now, once you find that out, then perhaps you can look at what the, the artist is titled. I call it commemoration. And commemoration is called commemorates an event, so the flag commemorates an event. If you start looking it up, you find out that the event that the flag commemorates has long since gone. So by doing that, you find that this is a flag that is tattered and torn and that it's not existing anymore as a flag of a particular nation. Interestingly, when I was doing it, that's what I thought about when I was doing it. Suppose a Civil War veteran great-grandson went to a trunk in an attic and found this flag folded up and opened this flag up. It has the memory of what happened. My aim was, how do you, how do you maintain the memory but the understanding that it no longer exists as a potent element? It is not the flag that it was. As Margaret Mitchell says, gone with the wind. What we are seeing is a facsimile of something that was, an heirloom, something that ought to be in a museum because this is something that is very precious because when you open that trunk and lay that thing out on the floor, you are not going to fly that atop the state house. I was riding down the road, saw this railroad sign. You ever see a railroad sign? I mean, if you go, and the railroad sign has this, and it says railroad, you know, railroad crossing or whatever it says. And I looked at the proportion of those things exactly as the, as the flag. They're almost in the same proportion. And I thought, really, that's what it's all about. The whole flag issue as we see it in our culture is, that's something that we have to get over. You know, we have to cross over that. So it morphed into a series that I call Signs and Crossings. And it was solidified when I went to the funeral of one of my co-workers. And the minister was talking about Barbara had made her final crossing. And then he, he quoted Tennyson. I quote Tennyson in my book, Crossing the Ball. And what happens is I just felt that in our lives, we have many things that we have to cross. It might be the death of a loved one. It might be a divorce. It might be a son or daughter who's doing the wrong thing. And sometimes for African-Americans during the era of segregation, we suffered in silence. It's something that we had to cross over. I mean, when you had to sit at the back of the bus and walk down and get out, the indignity of that. But those are kinds of things that we had to cross over silently. And I think death is that final crossing. So, you know, it's, it, the blues is bittersweet. I had that, that painting over there. The blues is not all bad or all good. The blues is bittersweet. It is. So to me, Batik has that, the dying, 
and the tactility of its surface has a kind of bittersweetness.